Hello, 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 hello out there. I want to welcome you to another episode of Getting Stone. Yes, indeed. Your host, Mr. Stone Potoski, here in the house. I hope all y'all are feeling irate, feeling that good love, feeling that sunshine on your face, feeling that sparkle in your heart, feeling the magic that is life. So many miracles, so many blessings, so many beautiful moments. It's a it's an incredible carnival spectacle, exceptional, rhythm rhyming, multiplying, high vibing, good timing, place to be. Yes, thank you so much for stopping on by. You know how much I love all y'all. Yes, uh, one of the trippy things about this show here, you know, we, we dive in on all the fucked up shit, you know, the humans get themselves all mixed up in, but at the same time, we bring all those good vibes and that good love. Yeah, it's the yin and the yang. It's the light and the dark. It is the silence and the spark. Mm. That is life. Without the joy, we would not know what is sorrow. Without the high, we would not know the low. Without the bitter, we would not taste the sweet. Uh, yeah, so my parents, you know, they're not here in this uh, earthly realm, you know, in the physical sense anymore. They're gone, and they just popped into my head. They, they popped into my head a, a whole lot. Uh, just now, they just popped into my head. And, uh, Judy and Don. Yeah. Mama and Papa. Grammy and Grandpa. Man and woman. Husband and wife. Hmm. Yeah, so some of y'all uh, know what it's like to have some kick-ass parents. Parents that love you, parents that, that wrap you up in the goodness and the, the, the joy of, of being alive and, and take good care of you and look out for you and pat you on the back and kick you in the ass when you need it. Uh, tell, you, tell you how much they love you. Uh, tell you how amazing you are, all the, all the beautiful, incredible things you can do in life, right? That's what some of y'all had, and that, that's what I had. And I'm one, one, one lucky dude, you know, because that isn't what everybody gets. Some people don't even know their parents. Some people, their parents harm them, hurt them, hit them. You know, some people's parents don't say much at all. Maybe they're bitter. Maybe they're heartbroken. Maybe they're wounded in some way. So, uh, I don't know. There's all kinds of lessons you can take from this. But the idea to me is, is that we don't choose our parents. Now, I don't have any proof of that. It's just a hunch. Some people obviously believe otherwise, and that's fine. So, if you don't choose your parents, then you get what you get. And of course, along the way, your parents at any point in time, just like anyone in your life, could, could up and leave you, could die. So there's all these unknowns, these things out of our control. And uh, I was just one of those lucky folks to, to land with a couple of beautiful people. People that I knew loved me. 
And from that foundation, you know, if you know that you're loved and, you know, people like, I mean, look you in the eye, take your hand and say, hey, I know, hey, son, I love you. Uh, just talking about it now kind of gets me. Yeah. So many memories, man. So many fucking good times. Plenty of tears, too, you know? Because life's always going to kick you in the face sometimes, you know? You're going to make a left turn when you should have made a right. Bam! Oh, my goodness gracious. My body don't work no more and it hurts. Hmm. Yeah. Something gets broken. Mom and pops, I love you so fucking much. Thank you for everything that you gave to the family. Yeah, you know, me and my sis, another like fucking incredible human being. It's nice if you have a sibling, you know, share some of this trip with. I found myself to be uh, one of the best parts of the ride, you know what I'm saying? You got somebody you can kick it with, you know, be, be pals, be friends, fall in love with each other, you know, your sister or your brother. So, uh, I was, again, incredibly blessed in that respect. Uh, yeah. Mm, I love you, sis. You know that. Mm -hmm. It's good to say it anyway. Yeah, so give thanks for those in your life that uh, you can count on, that you know are going to have your back, that you can trust, that, uh, you know, that love you, man. And if, I, if anyone listening, man, if you don't have that, that person there that, that you, that in your life, just know that this dude right here, this voice out in, in the ether, this soul brother, he's sending love your way. You can count on that. Every day. Woo. All right. So let's keep on keeping on. And uh, going to uh, jump into uh, the next chapter of the 33 Myths of the System. Uh, book by Mr. Darren Allen. A Radical Guide to the World. We are on to myth number eight. The myth of freedom. We are free to do exactly what we are told. We are free to buy exactly what we are sold. We are free to do dull alienating work or be poor. Free to eat expensive, tasteless pap or starve. Free to watch mainstream excrement or be bored. Free to choose any parasitic landlord we like. The limits which compel us into market consumption, on the one hand, are poverty, starvation, boredom, and dependency. On the other, are never mentioned. We are never reminded that we are unable to use our feet to get around, our land to grow food, or our mouths to communicate with each other. The fact that land, knowledge, and channels of communication, not to mention energy, drugs, diagnostic equipment, motorways, and railways, are all owned by or dependent on a minuscule group of hyper-wealthy elites and managed by a slightly larger but immensely powerful and ultimately self-interested professional class, this is ignored in capitalist definitions of freedom and in all popular discussions on the nature of liberty. In fact, the capitalist wing of the system does require free people in the sense that it needs to rent its slaves. Hire is the official term. Rather than own them, so as to be able to call on whatever labor power it requires and to renounce the responsibility that slave owners and feudal lords had for their chattel. But all system slaves must be deprived of both the means of production and any meaningful control over the fruits of their labor. 
forcing them either to sell their bodies to Orwellian slave owners or rent them to Huxalian hypercapitalists. Hypercapitalists also require what they call free markets, quote unquote. <laughs> freedom to buy any labor they like at any price, freedom to buy the laws they need to operate, freedom to trade what they like, freedom to conglomerate into mega corporations, freedom to exploit any resource they like, freedom to annihilate craft, freedom to tear communities apart, freedom to cover every square inch of our living spaces with exhortations to consume, freedom to upload our social lives onto tightly controlled and permanently surveilled digital platforms, and freedom to convert the entire natural world into a poisonous resource that every other living creature on earth finds that their freedoms to speak, think, move, breathe, or simply exist decrease as those of corporate capital increase cannot be included in official definitions of freedom which must mean freedom for the market, never ever from it. Any attempt to curtail the freedom, quote unquote, of the technocratic market system is officially represented as an intolerable attack on liberty, quote unquote. <laughs> oh my God. Anyone who attempts to distribute freedom equitably is instantly recast as an oppressor or a lunatic and any suggestion that they might succeed is attended with the specter of anarchy, a chaotic inferno of shady bomb-throwing punks. For the wealthiest people on earth and the Uncle Toms, whores and capos who manage their affairs, anarchy, like crime and genocide, is what other people do. Other people who are automatically assumed to be acquisitive, self-interested, cruel, and deprived. An assumption shared by a class of people who have been selected for thousands of years for their greed, self-interest, cruelty, and depravity. Thus, there is no contradiction in turning the planet into a vast, tawdry prison for ordinary people as liberty in their hands instantly transforms into a lawless free-for-all. This is why the system must force any individual community or country which is independent from the market, no matter how peaceful or aggressive it does not matter, they must be forced to join the free world. It's for their own good. Independent states must be wrecked and unable to provide for themselves Independent tribes must be addicted to hooch or to metal buckets. Independent communities must be separated from their means of subsistence. Independent individuals must be unable to produce anything on their own. Independent children must be trained to take their place in an overstuffed labor market made up of meaningless, misery-inducing tasks. Every square inch of the globe must be under institutional control and everyone must be dependent on the state or in debt for their own good. Fortunately, there is no need for capitalist organizations to punish localized moves towards independence. The system is so complete that any attempt to rescue one aspect of life from the totalizing whole is by its inevitable integrated presence in a hostile system bound to fail, thereby proving its foolish futility. Take your children out of school and somehow provide them with a free and meaningful education and they will become unemployable. Why would anyone hire someone who can actually do something? Prevent fishermen from trawling the seas clean, or loggers from laying the forest to waste, or porcelain factories from sucking the water table dry, and entire communities fall apart. Where else can they get money from? 
Set up a company which slowly and carefully produces beautiful objects for a mass market and you'll be out of business before April 6th, annihilated by the competition or by your debts. Behave honestly in a job interview and see how easily you find a job. Tell the truth at work and see how quickly you rise through the company. Let people do precisely as they please and initially all hell will break loose. And so, as defenders of the system continually point out, we need to live in a prison which covers the entire planet. If we were free, we would all be raping and murdering each other, or at the very least decaying in hopeless, dissolute futility. We just cannot be trusted. Just look at how we behave when we're not at work, not at school, outside of the law, or working independently. Look at how we suffer. Look at how we fail. That we do so because every aspect of life must be rescued from the system. <laughs> Such ideas are too horrifying to seriously contemplate. All this brings us to another aspect of restraints on freedom in the perfected system of late stage capitalism or of the monstrous totalitarian it is automatically morphing into. is that it's intensely invasive nature. Compulsory dependence is not merely a matter of turning up for work bodily and just doing what needs to be done. Your entire being must clock in. You are paid for your natural informality, your can-do attitude, your knowing irony, your team spirit, and your sense of humor. If you cannot summon contrived enthusiasms at will, if your love of work doesn't radiate from your pores, if you react honestly to your alienated condition, an event so rare it is always treated with absolute astonishment by all who witness it, then your capacity for conformity and your willingness to give your whole existence up to the market is thrown into terrifying doubt. This guy might not be sufficiently indoctrinated to mob rule. Official term, a team player. Better keep an eye on him. But it still doesn't end there. Yes, you are forced to rent your entire psychological self to a wealth maximizing leviathan for one half of your waking life. Yes, and to depend entirely on market interventions to remain alive. Yes, your every word and act is recorded and scanned for subversive content, but none of this is enough to absorb the overproduction of a massively powerfully oligopostic system. To handle the outrageous surplus of the fully developed debt enslaved system, you must also be convinced to continually consume to continually want things you don't need and continually buy things you can't use. To this end, the system must continually manufacture low quality junk that breaks in a few years or needs to be updated and continually stimulate desire for addictive consumption, sex, lux, drugs, holidays, films, chat, spectacle, knowledge, success, speed, Adventure, weedy, meaty, sweeties, culture, power, even transcendence, redemption, and revolution. You must want them all, all the time, and you must go through the market system to temporarily satisfy your unquenchable desire for more. Other methods of reabsorbing surplus include forcibly opening up foreign markets, crippling human beings so that they are in need of market supplied crunches, investing in the military and financial speculation. All of the most destructive activities of capitalism, which we are free to endure until we are freed to death. And yet, hold on. All this might be true. I might be compelled by innumerable pressures inside and out to conform, submit, obey. 
but I can still have or reacquire some liberty. Can I not? Can't I at least to some extent squeeze myself free? Can't I somehow refuse work, the spectacle, the internet, the vote, the city, and the ring road, and the psychological constraints of systemic ideology? Yes, you can. Anybody can to some extent. But nobody really wants to. They say they want to. One of the consolations of slavery is the freedom to complain. But nobody is willing to act, nor even to hear that they can. They know that actual freedom, the state of being surrounded by society, signposts its recommended, enforceable, and ill drilled modes of conduct. Actual freedom entails pain, fear, loss, regret, uncertainty, and quite possibly madness. Independent thought, feeling, and action, genuine conviviality, self-sufficiency, responsibility, and rejection of the system all seem to the civilized mind hopeless servitude to cultic ideology or bestial stupidity. As St. Paul, Thomas Hobbes, George Hegel, Sigmund Freud, Emile Durkheim, and other official ideologues teach us, freedom is really submission to authority and to society, to the system. Freedom is slavery. Yeah, my goodness gracious. See, that's the... <laughs> oh, I'm not going to dive in too much on it, but the idea here in, in America, you know, obviously is a home of the brave and the land of the free. The land of the free, home of the brave, sorry. Uh, yeah. And you, 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 you just listen to what what he said there, the myth of freedom, and you can see that it's bullshit. You know? Freedom is slavery. In this system that we're in, it, you, you're, you, you think you're free, but you're a, you're a slave to the system. You're not free. And uh, it's so entrenched at this point in time that uh, certainly first world Americans, the vast, vast 98% of us couldn't even survive without all of the system. We we would die, we would lose our shit, and we would, it would be chaos and mayhem. And uh, yeah, so the system, the system, it, 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 it's absorbed us, humanity now. Be curious, interesting, what have you, to see, you know, where this all goes, because it, it will, obviously change, everything is impermanent, and uh, yeah. I woke up this morning and I got myself a beer. The future's uncertain and the end is always near. Yeah. Jim Morrison, baby. The Roadhouse Blues by the Dawns. Yeah, throw some doors on anytime you really want to get on deep into it. That shit will like, boom. That'll lift you off, man. Jim and the boys, forget about it. That's some serious mojo rising. Yeah, all right, why don't we read ourselves another poem? This one here is uh, Lenore Candell. Yes, it's called In Transit. 
Question. Locate the center of infinity. Answer. Anywhere. It never stops moving. The ceaseless alchemical permutations gold into history. Rain into strawberries. Strawberries into my bloodstream. My blood into flowering dreams. The dream into absolute perception. Into coruscating visions of this is where it is, baby. Into infinity. It is necessary to search the spirit through the light of one's own bioluminescence. There is no such thing as standing still. The balance is that of a gyroscope motion existing within motion. The balance of a bird listening to its heartbeat, wings poised against the currents of the air, eyes tracing the turning of the earth, the planet circling the sun, the sun spinning its golden path in the universe and the universe breeding life and death in infinity. And the bird hangs halfway up the sky, infinite motion at rest within infinite motion. Let it go. Whatever you see that is beautiful, don't hang on to it. Whatever you see that is terrible, don't hang to it. Let it go. The balance is that of sunlight on water, the sunlight moving as the earth turns, the water following its gravity path into eventual raindrops and hope to another river. The sunlight and water being one and together for the duration of their parallel flow. There is no way to stop water. If you lock it up, it will evaporate and reach the clouds anyhow. There is no way to stop the sun. It holds its galactic balance and moves according to the nebula of outer space. Let it go. It never stops moving. There is movement within a mountain, a rock, a thought, a flower, a light bulb, a cat, a star, a rice bowl, an arrow. Let it go. It never stops moving. There is no such thing as standing still. The direction of motion is frequently a matter of choice. When you try to stop other things from moving, you give yourself an impetus toward backwards motion. Let it go. Most of the time, you will be the it being let go of. Oh, my, oh my, oh my, was that a sweet piece of work? Oh, Lenore Candell in transit. Wow, that was some, that was some badass poetry right there. Thank you, thank you, Lenore. Thank you so much for that. You, you, uh, you just, you just blew it out, man. You just crushed that. Whew, man, that was good. Oh my gracious, poetry, all art forms, man. Create, get out there and create, people. You got it in you. Every single one of us is a spark of creation. That's what I mean. Your being here proves that. So. So find something that you that just moves in your soul, shivers through your body, uh, tickles your mind, and you it, you just have to express. Cause cause it's all all of us got that something in there. It it, it is the essence of all. You know, uh, beating within us, shining within us, uh, glistening. You know, there. Yeah. So so find your thing. Yeah, by all means, and, and I would, I would, 
I would go ahead and say that that's the ultimate like why that you are here, right? To remember you are here. Huh. You are that. And then share that remembering that that essence. Let it just flow through you, man. Let it just whoo, however it needs needs to. However, just be open. Just be open. Whoo. Oh yeah. Exhale that. Mmm. Oh yeah. Right on, people. Let's do a tune. Let's do a tune and then we'll bust on out. Uh, this one's by uh, this song by Neil Young. And uh, it's called Comes a Time. Comes a time when y'all drift in. Comes a time when you settle down. Comes the light, feelings lifting. Lift that baby right up on the ground. Oh, this song where. Key spinning round. It's a wonder tall trees ain't laying down. There comes a time. Huh? There comes a time. Huh? You and I. We were captured, took our souls, and we flew away. You were right, we were giving, so how we kept what we gave away. Uh -uh. This old world came spinning round. It's a wonder tall dreams ain't laying down. There comes a time. I, there comes a time. I, I, there comes a time. Comes a time, y'all. Comes a time. Yeah, when you're drifting, comes a time when you settle down. Uh, and this whole world's gonna keep on spinning around, y'all. So uh, hold on, let go, let go, hold on, let go, let go, hold on, let go, let go, let go, let go. Let go. Hold on to your lover's hand. Let go into the flow. Oh, uh, thank you so much for being here, y'all. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love y'all. Sending a big hug out there. Feel that hug. Come on. Come on now. Can't, can't leave the show without a hug. You know how that is. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Yeah, love it up now. Put a smile on your face. Shine a bright out there into the world. Until next time. This is Storm Potoski saying, peace.